Agora TV. The world is thinking. Um, my sister has a chronic disease, and she works in an office with a man with a dog. It's not her dog. And um, so certain days she'll feel really awful. She doesn't say anything. She goes in, she sits at her desk, and the dog knows. The dog comes up. It's always there. It's there every day, but it will come up on those days, and she said it will sit under her desk and sometimes put its head on her foot, lean against her. It somehow feels that. Now, what is that? It looks like empathy. Is she giving off something? I don't understand what that is and what the difference is when you say, when you show the picture of the dog, it, seem, it looks a lot like the same thing to me. Okay, I very carefully worded that conclusion there saying there's hardly any other species out there that does that. <laughs> Just in preparation for that one, there's every now and then amazing examples of a lion who has killed a gazelle and finds the baby and imprints on it, and YouTube is full of those things, and they're totally, but they are extremely rare events. They're not rare events when they come to dogs, for the very simple reason that we've spent 20,000 years selectively breeding dogs to want to be humans, where dogs can do stuff that other apes cannot do. They could do gaze following. They could do that with humans. All dogs can do that. Chimps cannot, because we have bred them to be fantastically attuned to our emotional states. And that's fairly unprecedented. What's the really cynical way of reinterpreting that is part of that dog empathy stuff when you're really upset is you're just pumping out all these fear pheromones that just smell miserable to that dog and it better make you feel better before you stink up the whole room. <laughs> it's probably not quite that cynical.